The story begins with Kimi Nishuchi, who doesn't know what to do with his future as Onigata suggests him to be a mangaka. But Kimi is not sure. Then, Kimi talks to his friend Ikuo and he tells him that he should focus on studying with his finals in mind. At night, while Kimi plays board games with his sister, she says that he should focus on his studies because he did poorly in the midterm exams and Kimi says that he's thinking a lot about his future. The next day, Kimi doesn't know where to sit at lunch, so some girls, Sumeki, Yuki, and Yuko, invite him to sit with them, he thinks that they are going to mess with him and he was right. They tell him that they heard that he wants to be a mangaka, and they make fun of him thinking that he will be an erotic mangaka. But he tells them that Aiko is helping him to study literature for college, so they make fun of him because they think he's gay. Later, Suneki goes to the library where Iku and Kamina are studying literature, and she asks Iku for help. If she fails the exam, she won't be able to go on a family trip during summer break. Kamina doesn't want him to accept, but Suneki, shuts him up with her eyes and Aiku agrees to teach her literature. Later, in June class, Aiku and Kamina talk about Sumeki. Aiku says that she is so popular that even the teachers fawn him over her, so he asks him what he thinks of her, but Kamina only answers that she is harder for him to deal with. Then Aiku tells him that the other day he saw Sumeki with a man, he was too young to be her father, so it seems that she likes dating older boys. Days go by, and Kamina studies very hard, managing to get high grades on the exam then his former middle school classmate, Kyuko, congratulates him and tells him to help her study next time. Iku is proud of his friend and invites him to go to a summer course in the mountains for two weeks, but Kamino wants to have fun today, and they both go to hang out at the arcade. They are in the arcade with an older boy, Araki. He tells them that the third-year boys are going on a mixed summer trip with second-year girls. One of them is Tsuneki, Kamina, and Ikuo realize that the Tsuneki's family trip was a lie, and Kamina gets mad because Tsuneki has a boyfriend and goes on a trip to meet boys, but Ikuo does not care. Walking home, Kamina passes by a new bakery and bumps into Tsuneki, and her so-called older boyfriend working part-time, he thinks that she is ahead of him in every facet of his life, so he decides to call Ikuo and agrees to go with him to the intensive summer course. In the mountains, Kamina feels nervous because he thinks that all the other high school students are very smart, and he was right since he didn't do well in pop quiz, so he prefers to stay in his room that night. Alone, he imagines that he is on the beach with Suneki, and she feeds him. He snaps out of his reverie and screams that he came here to change as a person and opens the window. Suddenly, a wet girl comes climbing through his window and Kamina screams in fright. She is Suneki. It turns out that her parents found out that she was working part-time and punished her. They also got very angry about the mixed trip she wanted to do with the boys, so they took her to a hotel in the mountains. Kamina complains that she lied about the family trip, but she says that she doesn't have to tell him about her private life. He decides to keep quiet so she can calm down, so Tsuneki tells him that she ran away from the hotel without a cell phone, but it started to rain and she was chased by a herd of deer. So when she saw an open window, she climbed up there to ask for a towel. Unfortunately, all the clothes in her suitcase are wet, so she asks him to borrow his clothes. Kamina blushes thinking that she will wear his used clothes. After she leaves, Kamina goes to sleep and can't help but have dreams about her. The next morning, Kamina looks for Tsuneki in his classroom, but she is not there at lunch. He and Ikuo run into Tsuneki and a girl named Meiko. The two girls have exclusive classes in another classroom because they are both a disaster. Tsumeki tells them that she is grounded. She must clean the women's bathroom and wants to wear the clothes Kamina lent her. After that, she plans to run away again. After math class and cleaning the women's bathroom, Tsuneki asks Mako to teach her how to use the washing machine to wash Kamina's clothes, and Mako tells her that everyone thinks she's a for wearing her boyfriend's clothes. It turns out that she was seen leaving Kamina's room last night. This amuses Tsumeki, and she doesn't tell her that it's a lie. She implies that they had a wild night of passion. Meanwhile, Kamina overhears two girls badmouthing Tsuneki. They are upset that a lewd couple is interrupting their concentration on studies. Kamina interrupts them and tells them that what they say is a lie, but at that moment, Tsumeki arrives and returns his clothes acting as his girlfriend. This annoys the other girls more and they leave. Tsuneki takes Kamina to another place to give him his clothes so there are no more rumors about them. He is surprised that his clothes are washed since he doesn't see her as a girl who knows how to do housework. She is offended and says that she will make him a late night meal to show him that she is good at cooking. At night, Tsumeki surprises them with a Spanish omelette. The four of them eat and are delighted with the food, especially Kamina. This is the first time that he eats food prepared by a girl other than his mother or sister. He thanks her and tells her that the homemade food took away his nerves from the summer course. Then Mako teases Kamina by telling him that a girl washes clothes and made his dinner as if she were his wife. Kamina almost chokes, making everyone laugh. Later, while Tsumeki is washing the dishes, she tells Kamida that she plans to run away again because she gets angry being there against her will and she doesn't have proper clothes, so he tells her that she can wear his clothes as long as she needs and convinces her not to run away because she might be chased by deer again. He doesn't want to worry about her because he couldn't concentrate on his studies. 
Sunaki is moved to hear this and says that she will stay a while longer. A week later, Meko and Sunaki have improved so they can have classes with the other students, but Sunaki takes the opportunity to flirt with Kemida and make him nervous, so the whole class give him dirty looks. At break, Sunaki is angry and Kemida advises her not to be so provocative and it's better if they don't talk anymore, she agrees but asks him what gold he has to be there, and he doesn't answer her. Sumiki stays away from Kamina for a while, until one night while he is eating ramen, she scratches at his door to get him to let her in. She tells him that she needs to talk to someone because she's bored to death, she starts to pester him because he doesn't have any food for her, and he gives her the leftovers of his ramen soup, she drinks it smoothly and lies on his bed to study, he tries to focus but can't stop thinking that he has a girl in his room. The silence lasts a few minutes and she begins to murmur her desire to be at the beach, she could be with a hot guy at the beach while she wear her nice bikini. He tells her that she would surely look lovely with her bikini on. After that, they go to the small pool in the men's bathroom. She poses for him in a bikini, and he says that she looks provocative. Suniki thanks him because she wanted someone to praise her bikini. While taking a bath together, Kamina can't help but get aroused seeing Suniki's body. But suddenly, the lights turn on and a teacher who wanted to take a bath comes in. Suniki hides under the water holding her breath and Kamina tells his teacher that he wanted to talk to him. And if he wants, he can wash his back. The teacher sees that Kamina has a on and declines the offer, because he imagines what those hands touched and runs away. After that, Kamina walks Sumiki to her room because she passed out from holding her breath, but she prefers to go out for air. Outside, he asks her why she lied about her family trip, and she tells him that maybe one day she will have a family trip, then he asks her if she likes Araki, but she smiles at him and says it's a secret, then he asks her if she's the girlfriend of the older guy from her job. She gets angry and asks him if he was the one who ratted her out with the school disciplinary committee, he denies the accusation and she tells him that the school told her parents about her secret work, then she leaves while saying that her boss is married and has a son. After that night, Suniki didn't speak to Kamina again for the rest of the summer course. When Suniki finally returned home, she tells her friend, Yuki, everything that happened to her. She asks Suniki if she met any interesting guys, she denies it, but Yuki doesn't believe her, so Suniki changes the subject. The new school period begins, and on the way to school, Kamina talks to his sister about the summer break, but she is worried about him since he didn't go out any time, but he promises to socialize more. At that moment, he sees Sumiki staring at Akari, who is with her friend, they exchange glances, but she moves further away from him. So Kamina thinks that she still believes that he ratted her out to the disciplinary committee. At school, Aiku is more animated than usual because he talked with an old friend, so he asks Kamina if he has a crush, he says no. Later in class, Sumiki continues to ignore Kamida, but he finds out that she left him a secret note to meet in the backyard, where she returns his clothes and asks him not to tell anyone that they were in the summer course together. Kamina gets angry and returns his clothes until she explains why she doesn't want people to see them together, but Sumeki gets angrier and starts yelling at him. But they are interrupted by a shy girl named Makoto. She is from the disciplinary committee. She thinks they are breaking up. Makoto is very nervous because she saw a couple doing lewd things with celery and carrots in the rabbit shed. She is surprised because that girl is a very behaved girl who once ratted out another girl who works illegally in a Spanish bar. Sumeki is shocked and goes to the rabbit shed with Kemida. There they find Yuki, with a carrot in her mouth cornering Araki against the wall. Then Suneki asks Yuki why she gave her away like that, and Yuki says that Araki was interested in Suneki, so she decided to move her out of the way. Surprisingly, Suneki doesn't get mad because it means Yuki fell in love enough to go to such lengths, and Kemida is glad that his friend got a real-life girlfriend. Later, Tsumeki apologizes to Kamida for mistrusting him while he eats a dish she made for him, then she gives him back his clothes, and this time he accepts them. She tells him that her childhood friend returned to the city so everything will be calmer, but she is still jealous of her friend Yuki, who has a boyfriend. Soon she will grow into a woman, so he asks her to go to the beach to grow up together. At the beach, they play with a ball that he brought from the summer course, but they drop it into the ocean and Kamida goes to pick it up, and he doesn't mind getting wet. Suniki chases him and gets wet too. Kamina can't avoid watch Sumiki's breasts showing through her wet shirt. She accuses him of being a but she still climbs on top of him and asks him if he's He says no, but she says she is and kisses him underwater. After that, while Sumiki is changing her clothes, Kamina decides to ask her to be his girlfriend. But she interrupts him and says that thanks to him, she decided to be a professional cook. She will not go to college, but will take cooking classes in another city. Kamina is speechless, so she continues. She says she won't see him after graduation, and even though they still have a year left together, she wants to focus on her future. Kemina fakes his smile and agrees to just be friends. She thanks him for understanding with a kiss on the cheek. Later, he also focuses on his future and decides to go to college. Five years later, Kemina works at the same Spanish bar where Tsumeki used to work. He works there part-time, while he goes to college to be a dietitian nutritionist. His boss tells him that he will have a baby soon, so he hires another cook to replace him. 
At that moment, Sumiki walks into the bar, surprising him with a smile. In another scenario, Kamina spends his afternoons playing with Ikua and Akira, and one day he hits a very rare item. At that moment, Miyame, a third-year girl who is considered one of the best players, appears. She wants to exchange the rare item with him. But she is interrupted by Tomo and her friend. They want Miyame to join their club, but before leaving, Tomo scolds her brother because he plays all day at home and it's the same at school. Then the girls take Miyame. That night, Kamina is playing his game, but he is at a very difficult stage, so he sets out to be a better gamer to stand shoulder to shoulder with Miyame. The next day, Kamada and his friends find Miyame resting in their favorite place. She found a rare item and wants to exchange it, so Erika tells them to go to karaoke. At first, the boys are worried because they only know Anaim's songs, but Miyame is also an otaku, so she sings these same songs. After making the trade as agreed, Kamada asks her if she likes fighting games since they plan to play one that will be out soon, but Miyame surprises them by saying that she already pre-ordered it, so they agree to play it together, so they buy her a new chair so she can sit in her favorite place, where they meet to play. After that, Everyone creates their avatars and Kamina is surprised by Miyami's avatar, since it looks a lot like her. The game turns out to be much more difficult than they thought, so Miyami thinks they will get bored and give up, but it is the opposite, since they are excited by the fact that they will have to play a lot to advance. They spend several days playing all the time, so Miyami tells her friend that she won't be able to join any club since the memories she wants to make from high school are playing what she likes. Hearing this, Tupi can't help but want to make her a cosplay outfit for her to go to the comic market, but Miyame is embarrassed that someone she knows sees her, so she changes the subject. Then they meet again to play, and Miyame gives Kamada a keychain because he was sad for not getting an item in the game, but Araki also wants plush dolls of the characters, so they decide to go to the gaming machines to get some. Miyame feels a bit uncomfortable entering an arcade again since she hasn't been in one since middle school, so she can't help but look at Guzgul's machines out of nostalgia. Kamada notices this and encourages her to play together, but they are challenged by two children who got upset seeing a couple playing together and want to crush them for it, although they did not count on the fact that Miyame is too good in this game. So she runs the games alone and ends up tearing them to pieces. After that, Kamada tries to cheer the boys up by giving them the keychain as a comfort gift and encourages them to socialize with girls, so they don't underestimate them when they leave. He tells Miyame that he should have treated them kindlier since they are just kids, but she only treats them like they treated her when she was her age. Then, Kamina warns her that this way no one will want to play with her. So Miyami blushes and asks him to be her partner in Guskull, and he accepts blushing too. After several days, Kamina starts to run out of money from playing Guskull a lot, so he tries to convince Miyami to play something easier, like a game where you pretend to be a driver, but this seems boring to Miyame since she can't show off as much as in Guskull. So she returns to play and pairs up with the first one she finds to be able to play. Meanwhile, Kamina runs into Makoto who is taking pictures with her friend Kyuko. And since she is from the disciplinary committee, she asks Kamina to keep the secret at school, as she would get in trouble. Then Miyame finishes playing and goes to her study academy, and Makoto and Kyuko recommend Kamina to take school more seriously, instead of playing all the time, so Kamina goes to Miyame's academy to look for brochures, although he ends up hiding because he sees Miyame talking to Ikuo and going in together. Arriving at his house, he asks his sister what she thinks of Iku as a woman to get an idea of what he might be doing with Miyame, but she suspects that the question is more to find out what women think of him so Kamina leaves to avoid interrogation. The next day, Suneki arrives with one of the little boys that Miyame had humiliated, and they ask for a rematch, although Suneki is quite good. Miyame carries the match and manages to defeat them with Kamina simply acting as support, but they can't stay to ask for another rematch since Makoto ran into the president of the disciplinary committee. Then Araki and Eiku will offer to sacrifice themselves so that Kamina and Miyame can escape. Suniki takes advantage of the confusion to also escape and explains that the little boy is the son of his boss who wanted to take revenge on Miyame. But since they were defeated, she already did everything she could, so he gives up, but before leaving, he warns Kamina not to hang out with Miyame too much as he will start losing friends. Miyame tries to be the one to walk away from Kamina, but he stops her and offers to go get something to eat, so they go to a cafeteria. Miyame tells him that she used to play with Sumeki before, but now she has fun playing with him and his friends. At that moment, her digital deer needs to be fed, so she starts playing and an option appears to mate her deer to improve her stats, so Kamina offers high digital deer as a candidate and, after an extensive mating mission, they manage to make her deer have offspring. After that, Kamina realizes that Miyame has a habit of eating other people's foods and she craves what others ask for, so he offers her food if he is the only one who she asks for it and Miyame accepts. The next day, Kamina finds out that IQ and Araki were punished for being found in the arcade, so they must clean the rabbit shed until the end of the semester. Akua says that he is glad to have more free time to study, so Kamina asks him what he was doing with Miyame at the academy, 
since he was supposed to be at his house and Akua confesses that his first love studies there, so he wanted to ask Miyame if he knew her. Kevin feels a little bad for having doubted his friend, but because of this, Areki realizes that he is interested in Miyame, and even though Kamada says that he only feels respect for her because she is a great player, they encourage him to move forward as far as he can with her, because the two of them will now be busy with their punishment. At lunch, Kamada talks with Suniki about Miyame. He wants to know more about her past. It turns out that, at middle school, they were a group of gamer girls, and the best of all was Miyame. But due to this, the boys could not defeat Miyame, and this hurt their egos, so in the end, they all stopped playing except Miyame. Then Suneki asks him if she ever hurt his ego, but he tells her that he doesn't have much of an ego, so he's likely to never part with Miyame. Later, he calls Miyame since she had not gone to class, and she tells him that she fell asleep from playing too much, although now that she woke up, she wants to go play Gus Gull. Kamina says that it won't be so easy to go to the arcade, because the disciplinary committee is watching the place, so Miyami invites him to her house, and he gets nervous because it will be his first time going to a girl's house. At Miyami's apartment, he is greeted by her brother, he is a great guy who is an academy teacher and used to play a lot, so he taught Miyame how to play. He immediately begins to get along with Kamida, so he shows him videos from when Miyame was a little girl, and she's embarrassed because it's her brother's habit to show this video to all visitors, so she takes Kamida to her room to be alone. Kamina sees a lot of stuffed animals made by Miyame. She offers him any if one attracts his attention, so Kamina takes the bunny. Then Miyame tells him that she don't quan what she should do in her life. The people recommend that she take advantage of the great concentration she has, but she doesn't know what to do, so Kamina says that she would make many people happy if she were a creator of stuffed animals since the little boy, who she gave him the kitchen was so happy that he uses it daily. Miyame is nervous about being praised so directly, so she changes the subject with the game, but she realizes that Kamina is alone with her and not with the other boys. Kamina tries to convince her that it is not her fault that they were punished, but Miyami does not want to listen to him and believes that the history is repeating itself, so she tries to go play alone, so as not to break more friendships. Kamina refuses to let her go play alone, so Miyame calls Sumeki to play together like before, but Sumeki tells her that she has already retired from games and now she has a better partner, so Miyame accepts Kamina's offer to continue playing together. So he takes her to his secret place where they can play without worrying about the disciplinary committee since it's an old arcade. Kamida and Miyame have a lot of fun playing together, but she feels bad for worrying her brother, so she decides to act more responsibly for a while so she can study properly. Kamina supports her and tells her that whenever she wants, she can play with him. But the days go by and Kamida is left playing alone since his friends are grounded and Miyame is studying. One day, Miyame goes looking for him and shows him a deer that she made, and she wants to sell it at an anime event, although she thinks it would be too hard to do it alone, so she plucks up the courage to invite him to the event. Kamina wonders if it will be like a date, so she promises that if he helps her, she will agree to go on a date with him. Kamina explodes with joy, but Tuka, who was listening along with Tomo, get annoyed since she insisted Miyame a lot to go to the event and she always told her no, although Miyame compensates her by agreeing to be her model. The day of the event arrives and Kamina is a little nervous since he has bad experiences in events with so many people, but he plucks up his courage, since this time he is here to help Miyame. Arriving at Tuka's booth, he doesn't recognize Miyame, as she is dressed as a bunny girl and tries not to stand out because of her embarrassment. They begin to set up Miyame's stall with her little deer. While Tomo is distracted around after that, some girls are interested in the little deer, but since Kamada is very nervous, he ends up scaring them away instead of convincing them to buy something. Then Kamada has good ideas on how to use Miyame's deer to decorate her bunny costume, but he gets carried away with her and ends up playing with her body, so she gets upset and leaves angrily. Kembina goes looking for her, but when he finds her, Miyame is surrounded by a bunch of photographers who were delighted with her cosplay. So Tomo decides to sacrifice for her friend's sake and shows them her outfit. This draws the attention of the Otakas and Kemina takes the opportunity to take Miyame away from them. It turns out that the photographers saw her on her way to the bathroom, but now she has another problem, since she doesn't know how to take off her suit to So she asks Kemida for help to find the zipper of her suit, Kamida gets nervous because Miyame ends up in positions that can be easily misinterpreted, but thanks to this, he finds the zipper in the center of her crotch. After that, Miyame tells him not to be separated again and Kamida couldn't ask for anything else, so they have a good time for the rest of the event and they end the day by going to eat together. Miyame thanks Kamida for giving her the idea of what she could do in her future, since she is now determined to make children happy. After eating, Miyame gets annoyed with Kamida because he praised Suneki for how well her work uniform looks on her but he didn't say anything to her about her bunny outfit, so he runs after her and asks her to have their date that she promised him. Miyami says that today was the date, but Kamina doesn't accept it because it's supposed to be just between the two of them, and he wants it to be today since tomorrow, she will start concentrating on her studies and he won't have another chance to confess his feelings to her. Miyami is speechless since she does not understand love very well, 
So Kamina tries to end this awkward moment as best as possible, but Miyami begins to kiss and suck his neck, showing him that she likes him and even though she does not understand very well what she feel, she wants them to stay with him, so Kamina kisses her on the lips. After this, they start dating, but their relationship is platonic since Miyame is focused on studying. Ten years later, they form a happy family. In another possible scenario, Kamina spends a lot of time with Kyuko since she is his childhood friend and even nowadays, she goes to see him on breaks, so Neki and her friends find him tender because she is very skinny and small, so she looks like a middle school girl. One day, Kyuko is going to give Kamina the new editions of the manga that they like, but he tells the other girls that they are from Kyuko because the last volumes became quite shady and he has a bad image for being a gamer, and he doesn't want to be treated as a too. At that moment, they are interrupted by Tomo who is being chased by the Trek captain. Apparently, he asked her out on a date. The break is about to end, but before that, Kyuko asks Kamina to accompany her to a cafeteria that she's wanted to visit for a long time and he accepts later. Kamina complains because it is a place that she should go with other girls, although Kyuko says that he is perfect for the occasion because he doesn't look very manly. He gets upset, so he decides to show her how manly he is, so he eats a lot in the cafeteria. Kyuko asks him what he thinks about love since he seems very close to Sumeki, and she tells him that he should ask her out, but Kamina knows that would not turn out well, since if he asked out the most popular girl in the classroom, he would be for months, then Kyuko proposes to make a fan club for Tsuneki, but Kamina says that she is too immature and that's why they mistake her for a middle school girl. Arriving home, Kamina asks his sister what she was doing on the roof with the captain of the Trek club, but she tells him that it's not something that rare among high school boys, although Kamina has never declared his love to a girl since according to him, he is not interested in such things. Then Tomo makes him jealous by saying that actually that boy wanted her to introduce him to Kyuko, and Kamina despairs because he thinks that someone is interested in his friend, so Tomo tells him that he should stop pretending that he doesn't care about love and she tells him that it was all a joke since he was only asking her for help to recover his money from the domestic activities club since she is a friend of the president. On the other hand, Hyuko tries to appear more adult and realizes that she has to get rid of her manga collection first, although they are not even accepted in the library, so she stays in the park without knowing what to do with them. There, she runs into Nao and Koharu, who are members of the domestic activities club and seeing that she is so cute, they decide to try to recruit her, so they invite her to see their activities up close. That night, Hyuko takes Kamina with her, but the girls realize that he is Tomo's brother, so he knows that they do other activities apart from making sweets. So they kick him out with the excuse that they don't accept men and are left alone with Kyuko. She tells Kamina that she'll be fine, so he agrees to leave her alone with them, but when he barely leaves, they ask Kyuko to take off her clothes. It turns out that she was dressed in a kimono to enhance the ambience of the sweets under the moonlight, so they ask Kyuko if she wants to join the club. Kamina interrupts her before she can answer, as he wants to know about the club's unofficial activities, so Kohara gets upset at him for thinking badly of the club. At that moment, Tuka appears and calms them down. She explains to him that they have to make costumes to sell, because the school budget doesn't reach them. Then Kyuko decides to join this club, so Kamina has no choice but to support her. After a few months, the Christmas festival arrives, and in Kamina's classroom, his classmates debate what to do for the festival. After that, Aiku apologizes to Kamina because they usually watch boxing after the festival, but this time he will date his first love since they met at the academy, then Kamina says that he will support him in everything, so Aiku says that he could go out with Kyuko. On the other hand, the domestic activities club is threatened by the director of the disciplinary committee named Roos, since she wants them to make the decoration for the festival and in exchange, she will ignore several infractions that they have committed throughout the year. Later, Kamina goes to see how Kyuko is doing at the club, but finds her completely asleep and wearing a the outfit, because the girls in the club use her as a model for the outfits they make, she wakes up and is surprised to see him, and she makes him a tea with sweets, he's surprised at how good it is. Days later, Kamina decides to ask Kyuko out, so he seeks professional help, he asks Suneki, which places they can go since they used to go to pastry shops, but Kyuko is tired of so many cakes, Suneki recommends him to go to places for adults, so he searches in the internet and is scared to see that it recommends going to romantic hotels. Suneki forces him to show her and she gets red too, though she tries to cover it up by saying that she's been to those many times. After that, Kamita goes to the club to talk to Kyuko, but sees that Ruse comes out upset. It turns out that the design that Nao made is very creepy for Christmas, so now they will have to redo it and gather materials that can be used in a children-oriented decoration. So they leave Kamita and Kyuko alone. Kamita remembers that he has a lot of clothes from when he was a kid that he doesn't wear, so they go to pick them up and Kyuko tries them on since she always wanted to use it when they were kids, but Kamina never let her. Then he gives her a coat that he no longer wears and she is delighted. They return to the school to leave all the clothes. Then Kamina takes the opportunity to invite Kyuko out after the festival, so he shows her all the pancake shops that they can go, but an advertisement for a romantic hotel appears, so Kyuko is embarrassed. 
From the scare, she decides to reject Kemina with the excuse that she has many things to do at the club. Then he asks her how she sees him, and she says that he is like a brother who lives next door to her. Kemina is disappointed, but he accepts it. All this was heard by the girls from the club who were spying on them. Later, they ask her why she rejected him. Kyuko gets very nervous and doesn't know what to answer. Then they make Kyuko realize that she sees him as a man and feel bad for Kamina since he was serious to her. Then they give her advice to lift his spirits. The next day, Kyuko is still scared because she thinks he invite her to a hotel. So the girls in the club seek help from an expert, that is, Sumeki. She tells them it's for the decoration since Red awakens the libido. To reinforce her argument, she tells them that a boy who would never have invited her out to eat at pastry shops approached her and invited her yesterday, and since she rejected him, that guy invited many more girls. Kyuko leaves very hurt because she thinks she's talking about Kamida, and the girls start planning how to punish Kamida for being a but after that, Kyuko doesn't believe that he is capable of doing those things, although she also doesn't want others to make fun of him for the rejection he receives, so at night, she starts knitting a gift for him. The next day, she is very sleepy, and if it wasn't Kamida, she would have been run over. Kyuko apologizes for what happened and asks him if he asked someone else out. Kamida tells her no and tells her that he went to a karaoke with Araki to avoid thinking about her rejection. So Araki embarrassed himself to show him that being rejected isn't a big deal. That night, they met Suniki and her friends and Araki asked them out at all three and was rejected three times. Then Kyuko is glad to hear what really happened, so she gives him the gift that she was knitting for him all night, a woolen underwear. He accepts it blushing and she remembers that the girls at the club told her that boys cheer up if they see women's underwear, so she asks him to help her shop for though Kamina doesn't know if he should be here with her. Kyuko tells him that he's like a brother, so it's okay if he sees her only in her underwear that annoys him, but he agrees to see her in her underwear, but luckily, she only shows it to him over her clothes. Still, imagining her in her new p***s they chose was too much for him. So Kamina sneaks away while Kyuko pays for her purchases. She gets upset and says that the cashier would only think he's her boyfriend, but she realizes she said something very embarrassing, so she excuses herself saying that many pretend the same. He tells her that she has changed and warns her that he will not go shopping for underwear with her again because it is so difficult for him to walk now. She laughs and says she's going to walk him home so he doesn't get run over. The next day, the club finishes decorating the Christmas tree, so they end up very exhausted. Then Kamina realizes how much Kyuko has matured as she has put a lot of effort into decorating it. Then Kamina tries to ask her out again, but Kyuko interrupts him so he just tells her that he will go see them tomorrow to buy them a cake at the festival, although he can't help but feel rejected again. At night on his way home, Kamina passes by a park where he played as a child and sees that a boy with a mask doing video game moves he is Ikuo. Ikuo tells him that he was rejected by his childhood crush for what is destroyed inside, but Kamina admires him since he was able to confess his feelings to the girl he liked and tells him that he would like to be as manly as him. At his bedroom, Kamina motivates himself to confess his feelings to Kyuko, but he can't get out of his mind that she may reject him again, and he sees the boxers that Kyuko made for him and Tomo just walks in so she gets read since she thinks that his brother and Kyuko are already too close for giving each other underwear. But Kamina tries to explain that it's something normal, but realizes that even though she says that he is like a brother, she gave him a gift as if she were his girlfriend, so he gets the push he needed to tell her how he feels on Christmas Eve. The festival begins and Kamida is super motivated, so he helps as much as he can in his classroom stall, and thanks to this, they release him quickly. Meanwhile, she was happy taking care of the children and gave them cakes, then Kamida comes and wants to talk to her alone. Kyuko tries to avoid it by saying that she is busy and will finish late, but he doesn't care because he is willing to wait for her on the roof for as long as she wants. The Christmas festival continues and Kamida sees that a couple escape to the corridors to kiss, but as he was hiding, Kyuko finished selling all the cakes, so now she celebrates together with the seniors with the famous Odin from the swimming's club. Kyuko is happy for everything they did for her since Kamina congratulated her and even said that she does not look like a middle schooler anymore, but she also knew that there are feelings behind those words, so she feels a little bad. The girls encourage her to talk to him and gave her an udon so she can eat with him, but Kyuko catches Kamina in full spying, so she kicks him. After that, they go to the roof, Kemina confesses that lately he hasn't been able to sleep well since he can't stop thinking about her all the time. Then, he says that he wants them to stop seeing each other just as friends because he likes her and wants to go out with her. Kyuko doesn't know how to respond, so she takes it easy and decides to think about it while eating the Odin. Kemina puts the wool boxers on the bench, so Kyuko doesn't freeze, but she won't let that happen to him either. So she sits between his legs, Kemina gets nervous, Kyuko is also nervous, so she tells him the color of her pants since it's supposedly something that makes men happy, according to the girls in the club. Then, Kamina tells her that it is bad advice, since even though it is true, he had a hard time in the underwear store. 
but Kyuko is happy that they went, since she discovered that he could see her as a woman and that's why they have reached this point. Kenbina tries to change the subject by eating, but ends up accidentally touching her leg, causing Kyuko to wonder if boys always want a girl at Christmas. He can't deny it, but he doesn't mean that because he loves her. Ben Kamina hugs her by surprise and tells her again that he likes her. And this time, Kyuko reciprocates his feelings, so they kiss while the fireworks explode. Ten years later, they are a beautiful family with a daughter, and he became a manga editor.